fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? So I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and do another reviewing recent first impressions. I went through and pulled a bunch of products that I've talked about the last few months that I have fully formed my opinion on, and I just want to update y'all and let you know how I ended up thinking about the products, whether I like them, whether I'd recommend them, all the good stuff, so let's just go ahead and jump right on in. All right, so I'm just going to pull the products out of my little bag here. No rhyme or reason to the order, but the first thing that I have to talk about is some lipsticks from Lisa Eldridge. So these were definitely a splurge purchase that I made. I made Lisa Eldridge as my brand to try, I think, in November, and I was so excited about it because I just really adore Lisa Eldridge, and I think I just love her passion and also how minimalistic she is about releasing products. So I was super excited that she had come out with lipsticks that I was really drawn to the shades of, and I went ahead and purchased the lightest bundle. I wanna say that these lipsticks retail for like 25 euros or maybe 25 pounds each, I can't remember, but they ended up being like $30 each and then adding the whole bundle, I think, I don't know, I think I paid a little under $100 for these three lipsticks, which in hindsight, seems pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy. And if I could do it all over again, I do really, really love two of the shades, but the standout one to me is the shade Velvet Fawn. That is my baby. I love this lipstick so much. I've been constantly reaching for these. Even I've put on a gloss and then wiped it off to wear a matte lipstick. I'm like, who am I? But I really, really love the formula. So I'll go ahead and swatch them for you guys really quickly. Even though I did a full video where I swatched them on my hand. And I also did lip swatches in case you want to watch that. I'll link it down below. I'll link any video that relates to the products I'm talking about today. Just in case you want to see more in depth or, you know, application, whatever. So this is the shade Velvet Fawn right here. And it is the most beautiful nude. It's just like this, like, it's perfection. I, I don't even want to sit here and try to describe it. It's just so beautiful and I feel like it's the perfect shade for my skin tone and my complexion and everything. I just feel so good when I have Velvet Fawn on so that's definitely my go-to, the one I reach for the most. And then I also really like Velvet Muse. It's kind of, it's a little bit out of my comfort zone because it's a pinker nude and I don't really reach for shades that are more pink very often but I feel like something about the undertone is just right it really livens up the skin I've worn this quite a few times since I got it and I also wore it for my Christmas party with my family and I think I ended up wearing it for like eight hours and at the end of the day it still looked decent it wasn't perfect by any means I could have probably gone for a reapplication but it wasn't awful either it wasn't like super super dry and it was just like a little bit of wear in the middle it honestly lasted pretty well and then the last shade I have here is Velvet Beauty which is the most pinky of the bunch and I honestly haven't reached for this one that much there's what it looks like I really should I should pull it out and just keep it right in front of me so I remember to use it but that one's probably the most far out of my comfort zone so if you were looking for one and you're drawn to the same type of nudes as me I would definitely recommend Velvet Fawn the most but overall I'm really really like these. I feel like the formula is so interesting because it's super matte, like feeling like it's very dry down, but it also doesn't make your lips feel dry and I feel like it's comfortable to put on. And if you do the kiss test and just kiss your hand or whatever, there is very minimal transfer. It's almost nothing, which is kind of unbelievable. That's the main reason why I don't reach for bullet lipsticks as often. I'm more like gloss because it just wears off. It's fine. Like I remember it's there, whatever. It's fine. Like with lipsticks, completely dry down. Don't have to worry about it transferring at all. But with these, again, it's kind of that perfect in between where it's, it's comfortable, but it's still matte, but it's not going to transfer very much. So I don't know. I really, really am impressed with the formula of these. I would definitely buy more Lisa Eldridge lipsticks in the future. I think I had a little moment where I wanted to get the bundle. I bought all three and I should have just bought the two that I really, really liked and just stopped there. So I think in the future, if she comes out with more lipsticks, I'm going to try and be better about just getting the shade or the two shades that speak to me the absolute most instead of trying to do the bundle thing. But I do really like the formula. I didn't even mention it, but they also have that like super cool velvety look to it, which I appreciate. It's a very cool little detail. I think you can see the velvet more on camera, honestly, than in person. But I don't know. It's just, it's like a nice, just luxe little moment. I keep Velvet Fawn in my purse and I love it. All right, so we'll just keep doing lip products. So next I have something from Jouer. And I think, I don't even know what this is officially called. Maybe like 
what does that say? It's an essential lip enhancer shine balm. A very fancy name for a super glossy lipstick. I got this when I was in New York City in October and it's so beautiful. I really love the formula. Also, the packaging is super, super cute. I don't I think I have some Jouer lip toppers, but that's the only other thing I've tried from them. So I'm not super familiar with the brand, but I swatched this and I was immediately drawn in because I mean, it just looks like a regular bullet lipstick, but whenever you swatch it, it's kind of sheer and it's super glossy as you can see, which I absolutely love. I dig a glossy lip. So I have been wearing this a good amount. I feel like the color is not my perfect color, unfortunately. I have the shade Amerilis and it's just a little bit brown. So I find that I have to have, like for me, I just want more of a warm look when I'm wearing this. And if I have anything cool tone going on at all, I just don't like the way that this lip product pairs. But I do really, really like the formula. I feel like the smell is a little bit strange, but I just love how glossy it is. I love how it feels on lips. I feel like it's just kind of like a super, super easy lip product. They have another color in this line that's like a really light glossy pink and I almost bought that one but it was sold out whenever I went to get it unfortunately but I do really really like the formula and I think if you're looking for a nice glossy hydrating lip product then this is a pretty good one. I think it does kind of remind me of the Physicians Formula lip butters because I bought one of those and I feel like the formulas are pretty consistently the same just kind of like that really semi-sheer glossy finish and the Physicians Formula one is a lot less expensive but I do really really like this. Alright so next I have a lipstick from Milani Cosmetics and I have four things I want to mention from them today because I did receive some PR from them so I just want to let you know ahead of time that anything I'm talking about from Milani today was gifted to me but it's still as always my honest opinion but I just want to talk about this lipstick for a moment because this is the shade Bahama Beige and it's just their original lipstick formula which is actually super super good. I feel like I've been sleeping on this formula and the amount of colors I love it. So this is what the shade looks like. It is a warm toned nude. Let me just swatch this. I'm like running out of space. So there is what it looks like. It actually looks pretty similar to Velvet Fawn except it's a little bit less pink and it's definitely more on a glossy side. It's kind of like a satin finish and it's super super comfortable. I just really love this shade. I feel like every warm look that I've been doing recently I've been wanting to reach for this lipstick. I've been using it a ton and it's just refreshing to have such a nice lipstick from the drugstore that's comfortable and a beautiful shade and also cruelty free. So I just wanted to talk about it for a moment because I really, really have been liking it. I have a few other shades that they sent me. I think I own one from like years ago I should probably throw away, but Bahama Beige is definitely the one that I like the most, the one I've been gravitating towards. But overall, I think that the formula of this line of lipsticks, I don't even know what they're officially called. Don't know, but I'll have it linked down below. Overall, 10 of 10. Okay, so next I have the Milani eyeshadow primer and I was super excited to give this a try just because I feel like I've been hearing people rave about this for years and years and I just never ended up picking it up on my own. And I have to say that I actually do really, really like this. I think that if you're interested in just a super easy, like no color, no fuss kind of eyeshadow primer, this is definitely a really, really great one. I kind of went into it thinking that it was kind of similar to the Urban Decay uh, primer potion, which I have like a little baby sample here. Actually, this isn't the baby sample. I have a smaller one somewhere else, possibly in my travel makeup bag. But I actually think that I like the Milani one more than the Urban Decay one because every time I use this Urban Decay eyeshadow primer, I feel like it just makes my eyes look super old and dry and crusty, and it's not my favorite. And I feel like if you don't set it immediately, it just for me, it sinks into all these lines. It's just a little bit too dry for me. So I feel like the Milani eyeshadow primer gives the exact same effect of being a no fuss whatever, but it's a lot more hydrating. Not even that it's hydrating, it's just that it's not drying. So I've been really enjoying this. I mean it's like kind of like how much can you really say about an eyeshadow primer other than it works. It doesn't make my eyeshadow look weird and it lasts for a really long time. So I'm a fan and I will definitely continue to use this. And I don't know, I would personally recommend if you like the Urban Decay one and you don't want to pay so much for an eyeshadow primer, definitely try the Milani. You might be surprised. It's really, really good. It lives up to the hype, in my opinion. So next I have a concealer from Milani, and this is our Conceal and Perfect Longwear Concealer. 
in the shade 100 pure ivory I have this on today I'll do a little swatch just in case you're curious to see the shade just gonna swatch everything because I'm in a swatching mood apparently so there is what 100 ivory looks like whenever I was doing research on this shade because I almost bought it multiple times I was not sure if the lightest shade would be light enough for me and it is it definitely is a really good match so if you have super fair skin this is a good option from the drugstore and it's an okay concealer to me I find that I have to go in with just a little bit I cannot use a lot and it always if I just if I use even just a little bit too much it makes my under eyes look super cakey even today it's just it's not my favorite I don't love the way that it looks I think that it's just a little bit too dry for me and I'm not sure why it is that I loved heart shaped tape so much when other people say that it makes them dry but I feel like the Tarte Shape Tape just kind of sets down really well and it doesn't sink into lines for me. I don't even have to set it with a powder. And for this one, it sinks into lines and just, I don't know, I just don't love the way it looks on the skin. If I use just the tiniest amount and then kind of tap it with my finger and use the warmth of my skin and set it immediately, it's not bad. It's like not too shabby, but... Definitely not the biggest fan of this. I think it's an okay option, and I think if you have oilier skin, you might like this more than I do just because I have super dry skin. So the hunt for my Holy Grail drugstore concealer continues, unfortunately. <laughs> but I like it. It's it's okay. It's it's C minus. All right, last but not least from Milani, I have the Prep Set and Glow Illuminating Transparent Powder. I have the shade O2. I'm not sure how many shades they have of this. But I really, really like this powder. It's just a very transparent, light powder. It doesn't even look like it really has a glow to it, honestly. But it doesn't really look super mattifying either. So I've been using this constantly, especially for just super natural days where I'm like, just throw on a little bit of concealer and then I just use a big fluffy brush and set my face with this. And I feel like it adds just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of color but it doesn't make my skin look matte, which is definitely what I'm trying to avoid. I love a natural glowy skin look, so I've been enjoying this a lot, and I just think it's a really nice option from the drugstore. I have other powders that I like, but I feel like they tend to get cakey, or it's just a little bit too much, and this is just so light and fresh on the skin. I'm definitely a really, really big fan. There's 8.5 grams of powder in here, which seems to be pretty standard, but I feel like it'll definitely take me a while to go through just because I don't use powder super heavy. I use it pretty sparingly, but it definitely really works for my personal makeup aesthetics. If you were trying to use this and you have super oily skin and you're trying to combat oil and you don't want it to seep through or you're trying to blot with it, this might not be your favorite, but if you are a dry skin person, human, you might like this. <laughs> All right, so next I have a foundation from Bare Minerals, and I believe that I bought this with Ulta Points because I was super curious about it. I've heard good things. I love stick foundations, and I feel like I kept hearing people talk about this, and they would put it on their skin, and they're like, oh my gosh, that's like so like soft or like melty, whatever. This is the Complexion Rescue Hydrating Foundation Stick, and I have the shade Opal 01. I like it, I do. I think it's kind of a B minus product, but I don't like it more than stick foundations that I have that are literally like a sixth of the price. So I'm not a huge fan of the shade. The lightest shade they have is a little bit dark for me. And it's also a touch on like the pinky peachy undertone. So it's not my perfect shade. I feel like I can kind of get away with it because I have more of a neutral undertone. Where if I go a little bit pinker, if I go a little warmer, it's not that big of a deal. Typically, I've been reaching for this when I'm wearing a turtleneck, though. That does help. Um, so I like it, and I think that it kind of gives, like, a good medium coverage, a light medium. And I always go in with a foundation brush and blend it out. I like the Artiste one. I think that's pretty good, although this one kind of shears it more. I also really like the larger BoxyCharm brush that looks like this. This is the smaller one. It was in a BoxyCharm box a few months ago, and it's honestly one of my favorite brushes for stick foundations. But... I just feel like on its own, yes, it's good, but whenever I compare it to the other stick foundations that I absolutely love, it doesn't really hold up. I much prefer the Makeup Revolution Fast Stick foundation. I think that one is really, really good. It's my one of my favorites. I even got my mom to buy that one, 
And then also, let me see, I think it's in here. The Ulta stick foundation. I feel like the formula of these are super similar to this. I can't speak. Super similar. This is the moisturizing foundation stick in the shade Very Fair Cool. They have a bunch of shades of this. This one's super light. Just in case you want to see the uh, shade difference. This one's definitely a lot more close to my actual skin tone. And I think it's like a third of the price. Definitely recommend trying the Ulta one over the Bare Minerals. I like it, but I just, I don't think it's worth the money, honestly. Also, I forgot to mention it, but I am wearing this today. I tried to wear as many products as I could as possible. I also set it with the Milani powder. So next is a bronzer that I have been obsessed with ever since the first time I used it. I feel like I filmed a first and pretty, if it, the speaking again. I feel like I filmed a first impression video on this maybe like two or three weeks ago, but I've been using it ever since and I really, really like it. So this is the balm. The, uh, I'm so tired. It's the Take Home the Bronze Anti-Orange Bronzer in the shade Oliver from the Balm Cosmetics. I got this months ago actually and it took me forever to try, but I'm so, so glad that I finally picked it up because it's so nice. Here's what the color looks like in the pan. I'm just going to do a little swatch for y'all. So there's what it looks like on the skin. That's kind of built up a little bit, but if you watch, it blends so nicely. It's kind of crazy. I will pick a brush up and put it on my skin and it'll look like this blob of bronzer and it's kind of like that, oh my god, what did I just do to my skin kind of moment. But then I just blend for literally two seconds and it's completely diffused while still looking just like the perfect amount of bronze. I really, really love the undertone. I think that's really nice. Like, it's definitely a good color for me. But the formula is just so easy to blend. I feel like it'd probably be really hard to overdo it with this one. It does remind me of the Fenty Bronzer in the shade Into Sun, which I also really, really love that one as well. Similar kind of tone, similar vibes, both super easy to blend and amazing for fair skin tone, especially if you're not trying to go crazy with bronzer and you just want a little bit of definition. This is the kind of bronzer. I Did you guys hear that? That was my stomach growling. This is the kind of bronzer I reach for just because I'm lazy and I like to bronzer, bronzing and contouring at the exact same time. So I like something that does not pull orange. So I'm really, really a big fan of it. I've been using it a ton every day. Don't even want to use anything else. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some eyeshadows. I really just want to take a moment to rave about Terra Moons because I'm obsessed. So I went ahead and put almost all of my Terra Moon shadows into this Coastal Sense palette and almost all the shades here except for this one are from their Iridescent Chameleon bundle and I am so obsessed with those shadows. I have a full video where I took them out and just like swatched one at a time, oohed and awed and literally died about them and my feelings have not changed. They are so intense and just like the shifts are so beautiful. They're not as glittery as like the Davina Sugar Drops. They're definitely more just about the color for me. I feel like they're super, super vibrant. This shade right here, Red Giant, is so unique. I know it just looks white among a bunch of other white shadows right now, but it has the strongest red shift to it. It is so beautiful. I can't recommend it enough. And then I have a bunch of their regular shimmer shadows here, which are also so nice. Just like a really good metallic formula, very creamy, and some of them are duochrome, some of them are not. My favorite is probably this one called Hot Spice Cider here. It has kind of a more warmy pinky red base and then like a really beautiful teal shift to it. I'm super obsessed with that color. And then I have their multi-chromes here, which their multi-chromes are so pigmented and rich and buttery. It's crazy. I could literally just swatch them and stare at them all day. I really, really love them. This shade right here called Alter Ego is probably my favorite multi-chrome just because I feel like it really reminds me of the Northern Lights. It makes me so, so happy. And then I have all of the matte shades that I own from Terra Moon on the bottom here. These Shades were sent as PR and then I bought this one myself, but I really, really love this new matte formula. I feel like it blends super easy and I mean, it is kind of just like staple neutrals in a palette, but I feel like this palette is everything that I love right now. Just staple neutrals through the crease, amazing inner corner highlight, and then just something super cool and flashy and just attention grabbing on the lid. 
I've been super obsessed with their shadows. I feel like they are so good quality. I want to own them all. Trying not to go crazy, but I really, really love them. I just thought I'd update because I've done two different swatching videos. Just kind of giving a first impression, showing what they look like. But I have been reaching for these a ton, and I think that they are so, so beautiful, so high quality. I do have a discount code with Terra Moons now, which is Amy Loves, if you ever want to try anything from them and save a little bit of money. I don't make anything from the code. It's not affiliated, but I do really, really love them so much. I'm so glad that I made the order for the Iridescent Chameleons because it started an obsession. All right, last but not least, I want to talk about the Lethal Cosmetics Wavelength highlighters. I have two shades here. I have Scatter and Ionic. Scatter is like a pinky lavender shade. It's super, super beautiful. I know I've definitely showed it in a few different videos now, so you can see me applying it. And I also did a first impression, um, which I think I just swatched it in the first impression. But this is Scatter. You can see it's kind of just like that perfect mixture between a pink and like the lavender added in. I really, really like this shade because I feel like it can still look natural on the skin while it's just having a little tiny hint of being something different. And then I have the shade Ionic, which is what I have on my skin today. And this is a very, very, very soft, rosy pink. So there is Ionic. And as you can see, it basically blends into my skin tone almost. It, it does not even look impressive when you swatch it. And in my first impression, I put it on and I was like, well, this is kind of natural. I don't know. I was kind of iffy about it. But then the more I wore it, like even just 30 minutes, I was like, oh my gosh, like this highlight though, like dang, that is so pretty. I just feel like they blend so well into the skin. I've been reaching for them constantly. And it's just, kind of, like I said, it, it's interesting because when I swatch them, they do feel kind of powdery. Like they don't look like this extreme highlighting factor that I tend to go for. But just the way they blend into the skin is so, so nice. Especially Scatter, I think, is a little bit more intense. It might just be the shade of Ionic that makes it more subtle on me. But again, it's not even really subtle it's just like my version of subtle so i really really like i feel like it does emphasize texture just a tiny tiny little bit especially when the light catches it but it's nothing bad i feel like you'd expect that from most highlighters and overall it does look very very soft on the skin this is what it looks like built up you could even go in with like one less layer if you wanted it to be just a little bit more diffused i feel like the power is really in your hands with this highlighter so I'm really, really, really happy with it, and it makes me happy whenever I find highlights that are just that perfect color and texture, and they just give me everything I want, and this is definitely one of those. I would put it up there with my favorites, like Ofra Pillow Talk is a little bit more intense, this is slightly more subtle than that, but like the Natasha Nona Super Glow and Fair, and... Sydney Grace Pink Lightning, like I feel like I kind of put those all together as just favorites, and I'm really, really, really into this one, so... Um, I'm super glad that I went ahead and tried it. I'm honestly kind of curious to get the shade, I don't know if it was maybe Isotope. They have another shade that's a light gold. It's tempting. I don't need it. I don't need it right now. I don't need it at all, let's be honest. My highlighter drawer is super full, but I love the formula so much that the makeup goblin is me is telling me that I do need it. So I think that my standout products from today, just to give you like my top three favorite products would probably be the Lisa Eldridge lipstick in Velvet Fawn, the Lethal Cosmetics highlighter in the shade Ionic is my favorite, and then my Terra Moons shadows. So those are all the recent first impressions I wanted to review. I really hope that this video was helpful. If you like this kind of video, let me know and I'll do more of them and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.